Alright, so I was experimenting with my potions for a bit, and I remembered that I had forgotten to put the mouse cursor on. So I decided to just load my save again and set the mouse cursor on. I was just trying some different combinations here. This one should work. And this one, for example, will not. Yeah, so now both of those potions are gone. So what I decided to do was... Do that, do that, and do that. So, yellow adds 10 to primary statistics temporarily. Blue restore, restores spell points, red restores hit points. Orange adds 10 to your armor class temporarily. Green adds 10 to your resistances temporarily. Purple cures poison. And the white ones have various effects. They're not all the same just because they're white. So... You... Um... I'm just going to keep these ones. Uh, I had them arranged like this. And then I'm just going to have her keep all the potion bottles. So she will basically be keeping my potions in this playthrough, or at least that's the plan right now. Oh, that's a lot. She can't, oh, yeah, she can't hold those all. I'm just going to sell some of them then. Uh, so there's those. She can hold this. And that's about it for now. So let's go over here. This is an armor shop. This is a weapon shop. Oh, what time is it? Damn. Alright, I'll come back and sell these another time. You want to sell the item... Oh, oh yeah, I'm rich now so I can get all these. Couldn't be without it. 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 Alright, so now all my characters have learned all that they can from that guild. And you... What I was saying is, you want to sell each item to a shop that specializes in that item. Like, for example... Well, I guess I can't show you because the shop's closed. But... I would get more money for selling this club here at the weapon store than I would here at the armor store. Although that might not be the case just because this only has a value of one, so I might I would probably just get one for it either way. But if I were to sell, for example, this thing which has a value of a hundred, maybe one store would give me twenty and one store would give me thirty, something like that. Closed. Is this one still open? What are you looking at? Okay, it is good. That will be useful. That will be useful. That will be useful. That will be useful. And the good thing, now that they have uh merchant? What's it called? Yeah, merchant. They can get better prices. What are you looking at? That will be useful. That will be useful. That will be useful. What I'm gonna do is just have one of them have a high skill and merchant, probably her, because I gave her high personality and luck. So she can be the merchant. Whenever I sell stuff, I will always transfer it to her inventory, right? unless I mess up or forget or something. I will always transfer it to her inventory. Is there any gold in here yet? And then I will have her sell it to the shop, so I'll get the best possible price. The prices also differ not only from shop type to shop type, but from town to town. So an armor shop in this town might give better or worse prices than an armor shop in the next town. And usually there are some pretty shady areas that give you really bad prices. Ah oh, man, I was hoping that would be open. I'm guessing the other one's closed too then? Come on, be open. Closed. Ah, alright. So, there are some enemies to defeat over here. I'll go do that now. Aha. 
And I'm so not used to playing games with the keyboard. I'm doing so bad at this. Oh, crap. I forgot. Uh, well, no, I didn't forget. I just didn't think they would trigger yet. So when you step over this bridge, um, you'll see it if you go back in the video. But when you step over this bridge, and you go far enough along that path up there, some enemies spawn on this bridge right here. It's sort of like a trap. And you'll be able to see it because I had wizard eye on. You can just look and you'll see the red dots appear on the bridge once I get far enough. If you're interested. If not, you can just take my word for it. But yeah, right now I can afford to be a little bit reckless because I have my stat boost on. Which is another reason why it's good that I did that because I'm extremely rusty right now. With just the computer games in general, because it's been a long time since I played a game on a computer, and with this game specifically, because it's been a few years since I played this game. So, this gives me some leeway to be reckless, I suppose, at first. So later in the game, Almost every enemy will have some sort of ranged attack. A magic attack, a bow and arrow, something like that. So, you really can't just try to kite them and, like, shoot arrows at them. I hope it works. Where is he going? Did he already get over the hill? I think that one got over the hill. Well, I guess I'll get him on my way out. So, I'm almost positive one of these crates explodes. So, okay. Ah, I don't know. No. What? There's no way. Did he disarm both of those? Ooh, chainmail. And a spike club. Not bad. Oh, I should take the chainmail. That's. Strange. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so now that they have I don't know. No. Does she what skills did I give them? Okay. Okay. So he's doing pretty good with his weapons. He has all those different weapon types that he can use now. So which one does the most damage? That is four to six damage. I don't know. So the axe is the best right now for him. Spike club. Is anybody still using the club? Well, how much damage does it do? Four to six also. So really any of them can afford to use it. I suppose this most might. Uh, well, him. Hmm. I will give it to her. And he can use the staff. Sell that later. No. Nobody can use chainmail yet. I think if there's anybody that can use chainmail, it'll be him. No. No. Okay. So we have leather armor for everyone. Or I thought we did. I only got three. Damn. All right. I'll give his leather armor to her. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I've unidentified here. Let's make another potion. This should work. Just for the hell of it. Eh. Might as well give him stupid hats. Here you go. Oh, no, she already has that one on. Here you go. What's her name? Deanna. I don't know. Two to four. Two to four. Four to six. Yeah, I suppose this is good enough for now. How much damage is this? Wait. Oh. I'll take it. Right, so. Items like this trident, you can use one-handed or two-handed. And as you can see there, it says plus 1d6 if you use two-handed. So its base damage is 2d6, but with that extra bonus, it's 3d12. So that's better than this axe. I would say. I mean, the average damage it would do is better than that. I don't know. How can you not identify boots? That's... okay. 
Alright, so... I'm gonna go in here... And get attacked right away. Yeah, those things would not be that easy to defeat. Oh yeah, some enemies don't give any gold or items. Those things would not be that easy to defeat if I didn't have all my stat increases and buffs and everything. Another battle axe. Red liquid. Okay, there are barrels of liquid scattered throughout the game. If I remember correctly, whenever a certain area... Oh man, I attracted some enemies. Yeah, that's why I love Wizard Eye, because I can always see when I attract enemies. Plus it just makes a cool sound when you turn it on. So, let's make sure there's no more. Are they coming for me? No. Okay. So, these barrels of liquid, if I remember correctly, whenever the area resets, which happens after a certain amount of time, the barrels of liquid will be refilled, and you can drink them, and they permanently increase one of your stats by plus one. Red, I'm pretty sure is might. Yes. Yellow. I don't remember. Perception? Accuracy. Well, it's good that Archer drank that. Dude, just listen to this music. This is awesome. Alright, let's go down here. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to hit them with my bow from here. If you hold A, it attacks automatically, but if you put your mouse over one of them while you're doing that, it will specifically aim on one of them. Come on. Okay. Cool, no damage. Alright, so... Oh, I already started to attract their attention. Yeah. What about these ones? I... need to get my air magic skill up higher, so Wizard Eye will last longer. No, 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 no! Oh, crap! I forgot that one opens as soon as you touch it. Yeah, there are a lot of really tricky things like that in this game. If you ever think you're safe in this game, uh, you've, you've fallen for the game's trap, pretty much. Okay. I don't know. What did I just get? Aha! Poison spray. Okay. I think I'll probably organize my inventory after this video off camera. Right, there's another. The item... There should be an item I want in one of these two rooms. I believe it was this one? Spider. Aha! No items? Oh. Man, I really am getting rusty. Was it on this side? I guess so. Once you get Wizard Eye to a higher level, it'll show you where items are on the map as well. Okay, let's get ready to... Yeah, keep in mind, like I said, these enemies would be a lot more dangerous if I didn't have all my stat increases and buffs.
Yeah, did you see that? One just fell from the ceiling. That... Anybody who's familiar with this game would not be surprised by something like that. Okay, now the range at which they determine whether that bulb is green or yellow based on the enemies. Okay, that one has to be booby-trapped. Green liquid. That is... Endurance? Okay. I'm two for three. Well, thanks for the empty bag. So... Alright, whatever, let's... Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. There we go. That's the candelabra I was looking for. Ooh, that's nice. I'll take that. Uh-huh. Uh... There we go. So, now we have this quest item that we can go return to that one dude. I still have one more hat? Okay, well... I was gonna say stupid hats for everyone, but I guess not. Two of them can have the helm. Can no. he? He does not have shield skill. What's the other thing I got? I don't know. I will definitely be sorting my inventory off camera. So, that's nice. It worked. Yeah, I know it did. So basically, what I was saying before amounts to this. Oh, no, 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 okay, I remember, I was talking about the bulbs. The... The range for determining whether that bulb is green or yellow, like, danger near-ish, when you're outside, it's yellow if there is an enemy in this area, basically, on the map. If you're inside, it'll be yellow from a lot farther away. So, when you're outside and it's yellow, you have a pretty good idea of where the enemy is. There's, they're coming. And I hear it's a bat. When you're outside and it's yellow, you have a pretty good idea of where the enemy is because they have to be pretty close for it to be yellow. Well, not pretty close, but close-ish. When you're inside and it's yellow, there's a good chance that it's just an enemy somewhere in the dungeon that like, if there's a room adjacent to this one, or even approximately close to this one, then that room, an enemy in that room would show up as yellow. Let's open up the map. So, as you can see, this one's oriented weird for some reason. Like, it, the area you start and starts out over here. So, this is not the end of the dungeon. I just walked up to about here, and I unlocked about this much of the map. There's a lot more of the dungeon than this, but I'll be coming back to it later. For now, the... oh yeah, these guys. Where's the other one? What, the other one didn't? Oh. The other one abandoned post, I guess. So I'll be coming back to that area. Where? What? Oh, he was from the bridge, that's why. Yeah, see what I'm talking about? is when I was right there, it was green even though he was right here. If I was in a dungeon and he was this far away, that would have still been yellow. So that's what I'm saying. Um, I'll get back to what I was going to say about that in a moment, but it's 12.21 a.m. Can I... No, uh, it's still there. I'm just going to go... What time is this open from? 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. So, there's a few reasons 
Can we assist you? That the range for the enemy detection bulb is higher in dungeons. One of the reasons is that you cannot rest when enemies are near, so when you're in a dungeon, you have to be really safe in order to be able to rest. Because it will mark enemies as being near, even if they're just vaguely close. They basically don't want you resting in dungeons, unless you're pretty safe. It's mostly to create a sense of danger. Plus, it, it creates a sense of danger that you don't know how close they are, because it's it's such a high range when it's yellow that you're always on edge when it's like that. It's like, well, are they right next to me, or are they somewhere far away? It, it really makes you, like, almost paranoid. I have to say, this game well, not this game specifically, but this series. Oh, I should have been more careful. This series. Now oh, let's kill these guys. This series does the danger around every corner atmosphere better than any other series I've ever played. And I've played a lot of games before. So that's saying a lot. I really don't get scared easily, especially by games, but when I was playing this game as a kid, like almost half the time I was playing this game I was always on edge that something was going to happen. Like I'm not trying to say this is a scary game, I'm just saying they made a really tense atmosphere. Like this isn't just some relaxing game that you can just like go through and like, beat a few enemies here, and then come back and easily beat a few more enemies, and anything like that. This is, like... It really gives you a sense of accomplishment when you finish things. I'm not trying to palm this off as some sort of, like... Uh, okay, let me finish what I was talking about before I mess with that. I'm not trying to palm this off as some sort of super hardcore RPG or anything, but... I'm just saying this is... it's really well done. They... they did their job on this one. I'll just leave it at that. So... How are you? I've never really understood why this dude doesn't attack you. You know, goblins, you leave. We take castle to watch over humans. You know more kill us. I guess... I never really thought about this before, because like I said, I didn't pay too much attention to the story. Uh, the previous times I was playing through it. But I guess what happened is, if you remember when I talked to that chick in Town Hall, she said that she had taken Goblin Watch and they left it alone for a while. <coughs> um, potentially booby-trapped. Got it. Good. I don't know. So when he said got it, that means he disarmed the trap. So that's good. So I'm guessing what happened is that chick in Town Hall, when she said that they had been keeping Goblin Watch as their little area, but then the goblins took it over. What happened is they took it over just because they don't want the humans to be killing them. And that goblin, I guess, saw that you weren't going to kill him and you didn't pose a threat, so he just told you to leave, or something like that. I'm not sure, but... Whatever. Okay, so... I... I know this dungeon well enough that I can almost do it blindfolded. Oh, uh, well, didn't mean to open that yet. Oops. But, um... Yeah. I remember all the tricks in both of those rooms. So... It should just be some... Basic low-level enemies here, rats. And then once I open here, some goblins. So, some people use this area as, like, an unofficial storage. The thing you gotta be careful about using this as a storage with is that the dungeon will reset after one year, I believe. So, if you store your stuff in the chest in this dungeon, you can come back and get it at any time. I like drawing out a few enemies at a time like that. 
You can come back and get it at any time, but when the dungeon resets after a year, it'll reset the contents of the chest too. So you have to check up on your stuff regularly and try to keep a mental note of when the dungeon is going to reset and I just spawned the ones over there. Well, no, I didn't spawn them, but I attracted their attention. So... Is that all of them? Yeah, that's all of them. So for example, this chest right here, I could put my stuff in this chest, and then I could come back and get it at any time. But if the dungeon resets, I basically lost everything that I had in there. So... That sucks. I... Oh, I've had them awake too long. Damn. Alright. I... I'll have to take care of that after this, I suppose. Yeah, one thing that I think was a really nice touch to this game is how you can hear the, the enemies in the dungeon like the ones that were in that room, I was still hearing them, even though I wasn't right next to them. It's sort of like... I don't know, I guess it's just... scary. Whatever. Come on. Okay. Okay, here's the Goblin Watch code, that's important. <coughs> it's all not bad. Oh man, I really gotta start clearing out my inventory. Oh no, this is... Alright. I'll just haphazardly make some room for this for the time being. Success! I believe it worked. Uh, is that gonna be enough room? That should be enough room for both of them. Okay. Still gonna be more chests though. Yeah, you know what? After this... Yeah, like I said, I'm gonna be kinda cheap with my saves here. Got it. Okay. Aha! Aha! Okay, who needed leather armor? He did. Okay, they all have leather armor now, that's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear out a couple of rooms and then come on. Okay. Damn, he's doing good today. Usually his disarm rate is not that high when it's just this low of a level. <coughs> you might notice on the map right there that part of the wall is missing. That's because there's a secret wall right here. You can't open it right now, but when I go around, I'll eventually come from that side, and then I'll be able to open it like that, and that's how I'll get back to the beginning here. So what I'll do, after I clear out a couple rooms, I'll go rest at the inn to restore my food, or not to restore my food, to make them not weak, and then I'll sell a bunch of stuff in my inventory. Wow, I just killed that guy from... How did I... Oh, wow. I just killed this guy just because his hand was, like, phasing through the wall. So I attacked him when I held down A. And I guess I did the same thing for him. I didn't fully kill him, though. Okay. Let's just make a mad dash for it. And then... Only one enemy. No big deal. Now, it kind of ruins the surprise that there's going to be rats when you open this part because you can see them through the wall, but whatever, 1998. So the way you open these, although I guess... I don't know. Aha! Nice. I guess there's a good chance that people would have opened these accidentally and still been surprised. I'm pretty sure these do nothing. Yeah, those are just there for decoration, I suppose. So you do this, and then both of these get lowered. And a few rats here. Or maybe just one. The only one. And 
then there's gonna be more enemies over here. I could have sworn there was a way to strafe. Okay, save time. Got it. Wow. Damn, he's doing good today. Ah, oh, can anybody carry that? Damn it. How much is it worth? Um, I don't know. Aha! Ah! Aha! Okay. Everything I don't immediately need, I'll just leave here. And then when I come back from visiting the town, let me kill these guys first. Yeah, even these low level enemies can give you some trouble. when you're just starting out. Like those rats, for example, can poison you and maybe disease you, I believe. Plus you start out with like 20, 30 hit points. So even if they do like three damage per attack, that's still a relatively quick kill. Well, not kill, but knocking unconscious. So, Oh, it's already 5 a.m. Hello, come on in. Um. Yeah, that'll just make it 1 p.m. Enjoy your stay. Rent room for two gold. The only reason I didn't want to do that before was because. Oh no! Did it take off their active spells? Oh, that's right. That makes sense. Damn it. Well, what are their stats now? Well. At least I still have my permanent stat buffs, but I'm not going to be super OP anymore. Just kind of OP. Um, that's right, I should take the... Get my way. Shape a candle over to this guy. Hello, come on in. There we go. Now I think... Yeah, that lowered my reputation because he's a follower of Ba. And Ba are kind of, sort of, the main antagonists of this game, but not really. So I just helped the antagonists. Now let me show you how you level up. But first, let me show you that it is uh, Wednesday, January 3rd, 1165. How about some training? Okay. 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 Now it is Thursday, January 11th, 1165. So, while I gained those 8 levels, 8 days passed. <coughs> so time actually passes, although time has very little effect on this game. Uh, what was I gonna do next? Sell my stuff. Don't touch the merchandise. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Do I want to sell the shields yet? Okay, let's see. So once I get chainmail skill, I'll take those three and that one and equip it on my characters. And this one, I won't need a fourth one. Who? Let's put my. Oh yeah. I <laughs> never. Um, let's see if I can get that to happen again, because I think. Don't touch the merchandise. See it tight wad. Well, I never Yeah. Yeah, they actually bothered to put that in the game. So let me Hmm. Who's gonna be my Okay, she has the personality, so she's gonna be my best merchant. Let's start doing that. And then We'll just make her a good merchant for now. He... Yeah, I'll focus on the weapons later. Him... He will take some air magic skill points. And some water magic skill points. She will... Uh... Eh, she doesn't do much right now. 
I suppose. Let's increase our learning. <coughs> so as you can see here, learning... I'll just read it. Learning skill directly increases the experience your character receives. Every point of a skill is a percent of awarded experience that is given as a bonus, plus a starting bonus of 9%. Five skill points would turn a 100 experience point award into a 114 experience point award. Expert doubles and Master triples this bonus, so 10 points of learning at Master rank would give a 39% bonus to all experience point gain. So that's helpful. She's the only one who has learning right now, so that's fine. And they left with one skill point. There's absolutely nothing you can do with one skill point by itself. So she's my merchant now. Let's funnel the stuff that I want to sell into her inventory. Don't touch the merchandise. Cause she can get the best prices. Come back soon. Yeah, now he's polite to me. So I don't need these, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that, that, that. Let's start with those. Looking for a weapon? Come again. Looking for a weapon? Normally, I do my best to buy a club for one gold, but I can see you know it's worth one. Agreed? Yeah, he's quite the... haggler. There. Come again. He really got me for all I was worth. He really pulled a fast one on me, I must say. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna save my spell scrolls for now. Oh, that's right, I was going to put that on him, and then give this hat to her. Yeah, no, I don't need this hat. I don't need this. Armor. Don't need this, don't need this, this, this. Well, she's definitely getting that one, and then he can get these. I don't know. I don't know. Wow, already full again, okay. Looking for a weapon. Usually I try to buy something like this dagger for two gold. I'll give you three for it, and it's worth eight. That's sure best I'm gonna get right now. Come again. I don't know. Don't need that. I don't know. That, that, and that will be the last of the stuff I sell. Right now. For a weapon. Come again. Don't touch the merchandise. Actually, you know what? <coughs> yeah, it's not that you get better prices. These guys just don't even buy specific things. The armorsmith won't buy the trident at all. So, yeah. Come back soon. So I guess at the moment I'm getting about 40% of what these things are worth. You can also have them repair anything that's broken. Items don't get broken through use in this game, they get broken if, a, if an enemy attacks them and breaks them. You can identify an item, so like right now I could get that identified, well not him because he's a blacksmith. I could identify, well. See ya, cheapskate. How rude. Don't touch the merchandise. There you go. Tell you what it is for 60 gold pieces. Well, I'm waiting until... Jeez. How rude. Okay, you know what it is? They don't always do this. I think they're only doing it to me now because I have a bad reputation. So... And when I say do this, I'm talking about how they're, like, berating me as I leave the shop without buying anything. So... Yeah, I'm just gonna wait until I have identify item to identify those, because it's not too important to me right now. Let's go get some spells. The magic of fire, air, water, and earth. Alright, let's teach him earth magic. Er, fire, air, water. Him. 
Uh, he can wait for now. I don't want to waste my money. I want to get the best prices, so I'm going to buy them with her, if I buy anything at all. Let's see, Sparks is pretty good. How much is it? 486. Well, it's good, but I probably wouldn't be using it right now. Protection from electricity and fire. Ordinarily, I sell things like this protection from elect for 450 gold, but you drive a hard bargain. I'll sell it to you for 364. Mm. Yeah, you know what, I'll wait. And what about this one? The magic of spirit, mind, and body. Lucky day. That's good. Oh, you know, I just realized that's probably why he was disarming everything, was because his luck was super high. Precision. Precision's good. I want precision. Remove fear. Yeah, sure. Meditation. That's good. Mind blast. You drive a hard bargain. Healing touch. You're really good at this, Taliana the Guildmaster. You're selling me these. Okay. I hope I didn't buy the same one twice. Meditation mind bath. Okay, good. Yes. Oh, she already knows. Damn it. Yes. Oh, she knows it. And Yes. Okay. Okay. There we go. Should have been more careful and checked when she already knew, but it worked out well because I just taught him to Deanna. So, we're ready to go back to Goblin Watch now. We might as well get our little buffs from here. Actually, you know what? This was closed yesterday. Let's go to it now. Wait, was it this one? or No, it wasn't this one, was it? Closed. Yeah, that's the one that's open at night I was talking about. Wait. No, 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 the only ones that were closed were the magic guilds. Never mind. So these are the stables, by the way. And they're not going anywhere today. They operate based on what day of the week it is. Each stable has a different, like, regimen that it goes based on. So again, I'm not going to clear out this entire dungeon just yet. One of the reasons I'm waiting to clear out the entire dungeons... I have more reasons, but the biggest reason is because... Uh, let me clear out this room first and then I'll explain. Yeah, that's where I would normally have abused turn-based mode. Get all the turns I can, and then run away and get more turns, and etc. So, oh, well, already attracted more enemies. <coughs> so, as I was saying, I don't want to finish all the quests yet, because to become a master of dark magic, you need to have the worst possible reputation, and to become a master of light magic, you have to have the best possible reputation, and there's only a finite number of things you can do to get yourself to the maximum possible reputation. So, I want to save some quests until after I have dark magic mastered. I guess I could do it before I master dark magic, but I want to save until I get to that part where I could potentially master light magic, and then get myself to the maximum reputation, master light magic, and then it doesn't really matter for too much else. So, deal with this thing, Goblin Watch Code. So that explanation... It explains what every single letter on the keyboard does. And you can hover over them and see what they all are. Now, you could take this and try to work it out 
with a pencil and paper and you could you could figure it out. It's not too bad. Just say like, okay, uh, this opens door one and closes door two. Okay, and then after that, you want one that opens door two and then closes a door that's not door one because you want door one to be open, and you just progressively do it like that. You could work it out. It's not too bad. But the trick to it is look at his name down there. Sincerely, the draw cab monks. Well. If you look at his name, I mean, there's a good chance you figured it out immediately just by looking at it, but if not, just think about it for a moment. His name, DrawCab, it's backward, backwards. So the trick here is that the solution is to spell Goblin backwards on the keyboard. So it's N-I-L-B-O-G, Nilbog, I guess. And if you... I was mentioning this before, if you just, I think I mentioned this before, maybe I didn't. If you just randomly hit letters on this keyboard, then you're kind of screwed. Because for example, let me save before I do this. If you press M for maintenance, yeah, this is, this is maintenance. And then, uh, just more enemies. You could run away, go over here, go back where you came from. Then there's these rooms with enemies, and then you gotta go up here, and here we are, we're back where we started. This is what I was talking about, the secret door that takes you back where you started. So even if you go the right way, you will eventually come back around this way, but if you do it the wrong way, it'll take you to maintenance, and then that might screw you over if you haven't done all your buffs and everything. So, N. I L B O G and then the enemies are gonna start coming. So yeah, when I was a kid I thought that was like super clever. I mean I know there's much better puzzles than that, but that was like one of the first times I saw something like that and I was like, oh, Golly gee willikers, that's great! So, I know a trick for this area. As you can see, I'm attracting a lot of their attention. I'm doing that intentionally. I'll be able to do a better version of this trick later, but for now, I'm just gonna do it like this. And then I'll save the game, just in case I mess it up. <coughs> so, as you can see, there's a little crack in the door, and you can see the enemies through it. It's because it's a double door, so there's just a little space between the doors. So what this lets you do, is it lets you attack the enemies, and they can't attack you. Yeah, I've played this game enough that I've found little tricks like this for getting through the game. Although I'm pretty sure other people have found this too, I'm not like the pioneer of this or anything, but still. Come on. Is that an enemy? Eh. Oh, no, I don't know what that is. Come on. Enter my line of sight. There we go. Start picking these corpses. Oh crap, damn it. Well, there's a few enough of them that I can take them. There's probably a couple more. No? Wow, I got them all on my first try, nice. So that's that. There is fall damage in this game but not in dungeons. So there's a little hole down here, but it's perfectly safe to fall through it. I'm gonna save here first, just in case I change my mind about coming down here. And they all made their little I'm scared face. All right, so there's enemies coming. Come on. Come on. Ah. 
trying to not lure that many out. That's fine. Like I said, I have a little bit of free reign to be restless at the moment. So, I mean, reckless, not restless. No, okay. So, the thing about these chests is that one of them summons a bunch of goblins behind you. And I don't remember which one. But I do remember that one of them does that. Okay, as long as I have wizard eye on, I'll notice. When they come behind me. There they are. Yeah, so if you don't have wizard eye on, or you do but you're not paying attention, then, as soon as they come behind you, they'll get a bunch of free attacks, and you'll hear the growling goblin in the back of your speakers. And, yeah. So, it's kinda tricky there. But, I knew it was coming. Everyone already has one of these. Don't have boots on everyone. <laughs> so yeah, you'll take a pretty good deal of damage there, most likely if it's your first time playing the game and you don't know about that. Might even kill you. I'm pretty sure I've died to that the first time it happened to me. That's what I was talking about. There's a lot of traps and stuff in these areas. So then we can go back here and then we can leave the dungeon. There is some stuff down here. I think I can clear out these rooms, but if I don't get it on my first try, I'm just going to say forget it and I'll come back here later. And Wizard Eye wore off. that as soon as I get out of here. Oh, maybe I should have gotten sparks. Okay. Let's start being a little more careful here. Man, you see where they are on the map? That's... Alright, let's try to lure this one out this way. Because they're both coming. There we go. So that could have gone better, but... I got it. I'm not going farther, though. Not yet. What items are there? Crappy dagger. Might as well sell it. Another crappy dagger and a crappy staff. Well, I'm glad I almost died for that, so let's go back this way. And we'll leave now. So now that... <coughs> now that we've cleared out a pretty good area of the map, it actually is turning green inside this dungeon. So, that's a good sign. When you rest, you can rest and you can wait. When you rest, you rest for 8 hours and you use some of your food down here and that fully heals you. When you wait, that doesn't do the same thing, it just passes time. That's like, if a store only opens 
at a certain time and you want to wait until that time for what it to open. For you? Let's... Eh, should we deposit yet? Okay. This guy... The disease is not going to get healed just from sleeping, so we gotta go cure him. Wait, do I have cure disease yet? I don't think I do. So, I don't know if you noticed, but healing him was 40 gold, healing her is 10 gold. So there's different costs for healing depending on how badly you're hurt. And there's also different costs for healing depending on which temple you go to. For example, if you go to... Hmm, I'm not really sure where I want to go now. Let's deal with the stables. Ah, oh, you know what? Town Hall closed 50 minutes ago. Closed. Yep. Damn. So anyway, if you go to a temple in a more high-level town, it might cost like 200 just to heal basic wounds, whereas here it costs 10. Good day. Perception. Identification expertise. That's good. Yes. Good, good, good. Ah. Now we can identify some of the stuff that we couldn't identify before. I don't know. Nice! Spell point plus 11, I'll take it. So yeah, sometimes you want to come back to specific towns to do your healing and leveling up and that sort of thing, just because the prices are better. I really want to report back about the Nilbog, but... Are the stables going anywhere? I want the boat. I'm gonna have to kill some enemies to get access to the boat. Well, I won't have to, but just make it kind of safe. I got a mace. Oh, that one. I know there's more enemies coming. Purple. Ah. Let's, let's do some killing. So for these mages, the lowest level ones are the red ones, they are the apprentice mages. The green ones are the journeyman mages. And the blue ones, I believe they're just called mages, I might be wrong. Maybe they're expert mages or something. Yeah, I'm not sure if they meant for you to be able to scale up the mountains like this, but yeah, mage. There you go. So he's just mage. Jesus, how much damage does it take? There you go. And one more should be enough. Make things relatively safe. There we go. Eh, maybe I'll get this one too. But I'm definitely not going into their camp. So let's go up this mountain. Like I'm, I'm sure I was supposed to be able to do, obviously. If we can go down here, there's a little group of goblins over there. He followed me. Got it. Might as well kill these goblins too. Wow, look at that. That spell he shot was still going from all the way back there. I didn't think somebody would see me from back there to shoot me.
three to seven. So we can go in this little house down here, and we can talk to this person. What does he have to say? Hey, you! I'm Danny. What do you want? I can mend any broken magic item you have, unless it's a piece of armor or a weapon. My rate is 400 gold to start, plus 4% of all the gold we find. I'm not one who generally takes followers, but Hello. every once in a while I will. Expert staff defense. Yeah, he needs to be ranked 4 to become an expert in it. So that's not happening yet. And there is a big camp of mages over there. Like that little group right there is just one little group. And the camp is uh, like a big circle over here. And there is a bunch of groups of them over there. So I'm not messing with that area yet. I probably could clear them out. Like if I kited out one group at a time. But... I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to get access to this boat. Which I should be able to do safely now. So, purple liquid. Uh, okay, let's see, let's see. Purple is intellect? Speed. Okay. Empty, empty, purple. Speed should be the archer. Let's get this reagent. So, where is this boat taking us today? Welcome Missed. Aboard. Yeah, I don't want to go there yet. Uh, well... I'll have to think about where I want to go next. Maybe I will go back into one of those dungeons and clear them out a little bit more. I'm not sure. But... I think... What I'm going to do now is save it, stop the recording, I'm going to sell some of my useless stuff and my semi-useless stuff and organize my inventory. And then, between now and when I make the next video, I'm going to think about where I want to go next and come up with something. So, that's it for now.